I had breath. Does everybody have breath? Even if it's bad breath. We all have breath, right? So we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm in 
Amen. How many of you are truly counting on God? Come on, give him one more shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I have just a few announcements this morning. We want to remind all the men, all the men that we will be meeting tomorrow night here at the church. Amen. At seven o'clock. So come be a part. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Also want to remind everyone that uh, this next week, Wednesday night, is when all of the, uh, the, the ministries start back up. The Royal Rangers and the women, uh, the girls now. All those things will start back up this coming Wednesday. So uh, be, be here, be a part of that. Amen. Uh, we're doing a, 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 some really good Bible studies on Wednesday night. Amen. We're just taking scriptures out of the Word of God. Amen. And just studying them. So if you want to come and be a part of that, come and be a part of that. Uh, also, there's going to be a Memorial Co-Ed softball tournament uh, for Kim Everett's uh, son, Joshua Smith. Okay, uh, It will be held August the 15th. Uh, there's a flyer out there on the church. And uh, so if anybody wants to be a part of that, they're going to give all kinds of prizes away and all kinds of things. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, that's August the 15th. That's coming up here pretty quick. Amen? Also... The women's tea party has had a little bit of a hiccup. Um, it was going to be held in those cabooses, but there has been a hiccup on that, and it's going to be actually held here, correct? So everybody that's going to be a part of that women's tea party, amen. That's not like the Boston tea party, is it? I mean, it's, a, it's a godly tea party. Okay. All right. I believe that's all the announcements about... Oh, corporate prayer? Uh, is it? No, I thought we just. Oh, it's every Tuesday. I did. I just preach here. So yeah, come for corporate prayer Tuesday night. Amen. If you can come, be a part. If you can make it Tuesday night, come. We had a good prayer Tuesday last Tuesday night. Amen. So I think that is it. 
My wife's giving me the thumbs up. Why don't we stand before the Lord this morning, amen, and we'll receive this morning's offering. If you're watching by uh, Facebook or YouTube, we want to say welcome. We are glad you are watching, amen, and we want to say thank you. Uh, if you want to be a part of this giving, you can do so online. You can go to our website. There's, a, there's an icon there that says uh, giving. You can click on that and give that way. But we just want to say thank you so much for all your support, all that everyone has done through this time. Amen. God has been very, very good, and we have been able to bless others as well. So thank you for your giving. And so we just want to continue to be faithful. Amen. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for this offering. Lord, I pray that you bless it, Lord God. Lord, I pray that it meet each and every need of this ministry, Lord. And so, Father, by doing so, I know that you will bless the giver this morning, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And Father, I just want to speak that blessing, Lord, right now, because I know it says in your word that you can bless us even in the middle of a drought. Lord, we've seen all this rain come. Lord, we want to say thank you for the rain, Lord God. Lord, we just, we know that as you love us so much, that you take care of every little need that we might have. To us, it may be little, but to you, it's significant. So, Lord, I pray this prayer. I pray this blessing in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.
shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord.
surrender, Lord, those things that you, you want to take, Father, so that you can give us, Father, beauty, Father, for these ashes, Father, that we lay down. Help us, Lord God, to give you our hearts this morning. Thank you for the surrender that's here, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. behind your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with
precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. And though what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen, bow down before him, for he is Lord of all, sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Asante mi harve papa kusha. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we worship you and we give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you and give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I believe there's an anointing here this morning. And the Lord gave me a vision of this anointing. And, and what it is, is it's a burden lifting anointing. And if there's anyone here this morning that you just have a burden and you just you want that burden lifted, boy, this morning's the time to get set free from that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we just thank you that you are, we can cast all our care upon you because you care for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as it says in your word, Lord, that we can cast all our care upon you because you care for us. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that everyone, everyone that calls upon you, Today, we'll get that burden lifted up off their shoulders. Hallelujah. Whatever it may be. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I speak joy in Jesus' name. 
I speak joy. Hallelujah. I speak joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak joy. In Jesus' name. I speak joy. I speak freedom. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. For being present in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Did you want me to pray for you this morning? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for anyone that may be watching by Facebook or YouTube, Lord God, Lord, I pray that this anointing that's here this morning, Lord, would reach their homes wherever they are right now in Jesus' name. Lord, and I come against any burden. Lord, I come against any burden in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that it be lifted right now in Jesus' name. I pray that it be lifted right now in Jesus' name. Father, it says that you carry our burdens, that you carry our sicknesses, that you carry our diseases. Father, help us to cast our care upon you because you care for us. I speak joy right now in Jesus' name. I speak joy in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that it says in your word in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall, they shall receive joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
feels that they need prayer this morning we're just going to pray for you this morning the man the anointing's here we might as well go ahead and pray for if you need prayer for anything amen this morning hallelujah praise god i know some of you have already come forward but i just want to continue to open it up amen hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, wait in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anyone need prayer? Hallelujah. Amen. Man, can we give God a praise offering this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we want to say thank you this morning. Thank you so much. Lord, this is why we come together. This is why we meet. This is why we come together in a place just like this to lift up your holy name. And in the name of Jesus, we will not stop coming together. Hallelujah. We will not stop coming together. We will come together. One will set a thousand to flight, two will set 10,000 to flight. And Father, nothing Nothing will come near our dwelling because it says in your word that your hand of protection is upon us. Lord, I thank you for the deliverance that we have seen here today. We thank you for all the things that you have done here this morning by your anointing. Father, we thank you for it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give him one more praise offering. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, there's just something about uh, when the Spirit of the Lord begins to move and, uh, you know, hearts just begin to be delivered, things begin to get set free. And uh, it just lets you know that uh, God is still on His throne. Can somebody say amen? amen? He knows exactly where to touch. He knows exactly what to do. And we just want to say thank you for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I don't know if I can much, I don't know if I can follow what happened this morning, but we will go ahead and, and, and speak the word this morning. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, 
If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, we've been going over the Lord's Prayer over the last several weeks, uh, talking about how to pray, breaking down the actual the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, breaking it down and talking about uh, each facet that is involved with the Lord's Prayer. And so this week we're going to be speaking about Matthew chapter 6, verses 10 through 11. And this is what he says. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, I just think that's just so awesome because we saw part of his kingdom come this morning. Can somebody give him praise? Amen. That's what his kingdom come looks like. Amen. When his kingdom comes, well, let me put it to you this way. We're in, his kingdom's here. But man, when you see that authority come forth, when you see those things come forth, uh, you see it in such a tangible way. And, and so this is why we pray. Boy, I, I mean, I, could, I couldn't have orchestrated what happened this morning to go any better with what message I'm going to preach this morning. There's no way I could have orchestrated that. But the first thing that I want to talk about is kingdom. A part of the Lord's prayer is your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The first thing you need to look at is kingdom. Okay? What is a kingdom? It's very difficult for us to understand kingdom authority because we live in a democracy. And so because of this democracy, you know, we have, you know, uh, I'm not saying that what we're doing is, is wrong. I'm just saying it's very difficult for understand, us to understand kingdom authority. Because God doesn't work as a democracy. See, there's no voting in heaven. Amen. You can show up to the polls all you want, but there's nothing to vote on. Amen. It's God's way or no way. I mean, that's just the way it works. That's, that's kingdom. That's why it's called a kingdom. And so that's why sometimes it's very difficult for us because we don't, we've never been under kingship. We've never been under kingdom. We don't understand the rule of a king. And so we think we can, you know, when we pray, we think we can, you know, let's, uh, let's everybody get together and vote on this. How many would like this to happen, you know, and, and God just doesn't work that way. Amen. And so we pray that his kingdom comes. So when you look at kingdom, the actual word kingdom means it's, it's, it's a royalty. Okay. It means a political or a territorial unit ruled over a sovereign, which is God. It's, it's a realm. Okay, so we can be in his kingdom and still be here on this earth. We can be under his kingship and still be on this earth. You see what I'm saying? I might be in Kansas, United States of America, in Kansas, in Garden City, but I'm in his kingdom. Amen. Oh, say, and so we see here that it's a territorial, it's a unit ruled. When, it, and it, and it, when it's applied to God, it could refer to all of creation, which when you look at Psalms 103, 19, it says the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules over all. See, so God is over everything. Amen. OK, but kingdom more often when you look at it in the word of God, kingdom more often applies to his rule in and through those who believe. So his kingdom, where and, and, and the best way to actually put this, okay, is the kingdom, wherever you are, wherever a believer is, and wherever a believer is, there his kingdom is as well. And so we're going to dive into that a little bit more. So the first scripture I want to look at this morning is simply this, Luke 17, 20 and 21. He says, now having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. So he says the kingdom of God is in your midst. So we're not going to, it's not a physical place on this earth that we're looking for. You see the point. 
It's where, wherever the God, wherever, because when we get saved and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Amen. So wherever we are, there's the kingdom. Exactly. Can you say amen? amen? Wherever you are, there is the kingdom. Now, the Amplified Version says it this way. He says, nor will people say, look here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. It's both. You have the kingdom of God in you right now. Amen? And so, you, we all, as believers, when we pray, we need to understand that. The kingdom of God then more specifically refers to Christ living and ruling in the hearts of his people. That's what the kingdom of God is. So praying thy kingdom come is praying for the expansion and the influence of God's rule in people's hearts. When you pray, Lord, your kingdom come, what you're praying is you're praying more people get saved, more people ex experience the salvation of Jesus Christ, and not only that, but they experience his rule and his authority in their life. Because why? That's his will. See, his kingdom and his will goes hand in hand. So when you say, your kingdom come, what you're praying is, Lord, I pray that salvations begin to take place. I, begin to pray, I pray that people begin to get saved and, and, and accept your uh, son Jesus into their life. That, when you pray, your kingdom come, that, is that not what his kingdom business is about? Everything Jesus did was for the salvation of others. Right? So if we pray his kingdom come, what are we praying for? We're praying for his will to be done on this earth. And what is that? I've come to heal the brokenhearted. I've come to set those that are captive free. To recovery sight of the blind. That's the ministry of Jesus. So when you pray his kingdom come, that's what you're praying for. It's amazing. And, 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 and let, me, let me share with you a little bit about this. Because there's so many thoughts. So many different understandings about God's will. You know, some people believe that it's God's will to heal. And some people believe that it's just by chance that it happens. It might be his will to heal me, but it might not be his will to heal somebody else. We know that's not true because it says that he's no respecter of persons. So we know that's not true, but yet there's people out there to believe that. And so it, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit awkward when you play, pray... This prayer, His kingdom come, and most people don't even know what they're praying when they pray it. <laughs> they really don't know what they're saying. It, it, it reminds me one time of the, of the very first pastorate I was received at. It was our first senior pastorate. And uh, we, we were in a denominational church. We got voted on 100%. Not one person did not want us there. It was a 100% exception. And so we were excited. Tammy was excited. You know, the church was small. I mean, it didn't have very many people in it. It was about to die, actually. So there wasn't a whole lot there to not, I mean, 100%. How many knows that you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results? You know, that's the definition of insanity. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. And so... The Lord began to speak to me about doing some changes and doing some things, and so I did. Well, some people didn't like the change. And so they got upset, and they left. Well, I'm like, well, there was only 15 people to begin with, so I guess if we're going to have a church split, now's the best time. But it bothered me. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. These people prayed me in 100%. They voted me in 100%. They prayed for me. When the day we got accepted, they said, oh, we've been praying for you. We've been praying for this. This is what we've been praying. God answers prayer. We, we, when we got voted in, we were the answer to prayer. And then I started making changes. It's like, no, I'm no longer the answer. And I went to the Lord and I said, I don't understand this, Lord. He goes, ah, oh, it happens all the time. People don't know what they pray for. And this is what he said. He said, I gave them exactly what they prayed for. He said, the problem is, is they did. You know, sometimes you're praying for something and God gives you exactly what you prayed for. The only thing is, is you don't like it because you didn't realize what you was praying for. 
Oh, that was better preaching than I got amen. You know, I've, it's kind of like a statement I heard one time. You need to be careful what you pray for because God might just answer it. <laughs> amen? So when you pray His kingdom come, that's what you're praying for. The kingdom of God then more specifically refers to the Christ living and ruling in our hearts. Wherever the king is, wherever the king is, is his kingdom. And the signs of his kingdom will be present. Listen to that. The signs of his kingdom will be present. These signs shall follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. Mark chapter 16, they shall, they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall cast out devils. Come on now. Amen. They shall speak in new tongues. Come on. These signs shall follow those who, what? Believe. When you're doing kingdom business, kingdom signs will follow. We saw kingdom signs this morning. Come on, somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord, right? You want these kingdom signs to show up. You want God to show up. I heard a story the other, the other day. I was listening to a, an evangelist uh, 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 that went into the, all the foreign nations and it was just, a, you know, I'm just going to say he was just old-timer evangelist, right? And he goes, look, I understand all these new ideas and I understand all these new platforms and all these things that they do. They go over in these nations and they put all these big things together and, and all this, you know, make a big deal out of it, you know, and spend a lot of money, put a platform, stage, all these things. And he goes, look, everything's fine. That's great. That's great. He said, because all the excitement creates excitement, right? And you get all these people and then you can preach the gospel. He said, that's great. He said, but that's just not the way I operated. The gentleman asked him, well, how'd you operate? He said, well, I just tended to go to a village and say, give me your six, the six of your, let me say this right. I'll say it this way. Just give me those in your village that are the sickest. I want the sickest people in this village to come here right now. Now, this is faith. And they bring all these sick people, I mean, almost dying. And he said, I'd pray for him. God would heal him. And he goes, then you'd have your crowd. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> we can manufacture things or we can just let God be God and let him create his own crowd. <laughs> he said, you know, it's OK what these other people do is fine. He said, but man, when people start getting healed, set free and delivered, you're going to find a crowd. So when we pray and we ask God, your kingdom come, I want you to understand what you're praying. You are praying for his miracles, his signs, his wonders to fill this place. You're praying for salvations of those that need uh, uh, and to fill all of heaven with peoples. That's what you're praying for. And I just want you to understand that it's his kingdom come. His will be done. If it, uh, Ephesians 3.10 says the purpose, watch this, the purpose, I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version. The purpose is that through the church, say the church. Who's the church? We are the church. Through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infant variety, infinite variety, and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, the principalities and the powers in the heavenly sphere. Now, when you break that down, basically what he's saying is he's saying it is God's will. It is God's will, say it, it. is God's will for the church. That includes me. Oh, y'all stopped on me. Ah, don't stop. It's God's will for the church, that includes me, to display all of the variety of his wisdom, knowledge, all the principalities, to all the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. We are to display those things. Come on, somebody. It's the church's we are the one. It's his will that the church display all of his power, all of his authority, all of his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. That is his desire. That's his will. That's his purpose. So when we lay hands on the sick like we did this morning, that's his desire. That's his purpose. That's his kingdom come. Your will be done. When we see him set free, delivered, 
It's his kingdom come, his will be done. The will of God is that his sovereignty be established on the earth through the church. His sovereignty. What does sovereignty mean? It's just a big word for his rule, his reign, his authority. When you walk into a room, you should be the thermostat, not the thermometer. Now, now I'm a, y'all might think I'm getting a little cocky, but I'm not. This is just simply the truth. I heard a story one time of, well, I'll use the scripture. How's that? I'll just use the scripture. Remember when the seven sons of Sceva was trying to cast out devils and it backfired on them? And the demon looked at them and said, they were, they were praying. They said, in the name of the God that Paul preaches. They said, in the name of the God that, that Paul preaches. Jesus Christ. And they mentioned Jesus Christ. And the demon spoke back at him. Read the story. It's fascinating. And he goes, this demon said, well, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. But who are you? When that happens to you, you need to start praying. So I'm going to ask you a question. I know that was a little funny, but this is serious. Does the devil know your name? See, this is what prayer, this is, see, this is what real prayer is. This is what real prayer is. We, we, don't, we don't hide away in a room and close the door and hunker down. Yeah, we do get in a quiet place, I get that. We do get in a quiet place. We ask for things in secret. I get that. But God rewards us openly. Amen. We need to be bold. We need to know what, what we're praying for, who we're praying for, and why we're praying for it. Matthew 16, 19 says this. I will give you, look what he says. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So let me ask you a simple question. If you have the keys to something, who's in control? Amen? So when he says, I'm giving you the keys to the what? Kingdom of heaven. That means you have a certain amount of power and authority over that, right? And he says, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's one thing I've never understood. I never really got mixed up with any occult stuff. You know, I never got mixed up with any demonology and all that stuff. I never got mixed up in all that, you know. And, uh, but when I got saved, and I began to understand the power that comes with salvation, when I began to understand the authority, not just the power, but the authority. See, you can have all the power, but don't realize you have the authority to use it. Okay? So when I began to realize that, I began to think, why would anybody want to serve a defeated devil? I want you to think about that. He's already been whooped. I mean, that's like having a toothless dog guard your house. <laughs> What's he going to do? Gum him to death? <laughs> Did that give you a mental picture? See what I'm saying? And some of you are scared of this guy. Satan's been defamed. He has no power, no authority, other than what you give him. Come on. This is what you're praying when you pray. This is what you're asking for. This is what you're believing for. And then, and then here's the thing. One phase of the kingdom is the phase of the church, the invisible kingdom in the hearts of men. See, it's the invisible kingdom of God in the hearts of men. So, back in the day... Back in the day, when they had kingdoms, if you went on an errand for the king, you carried his seal. If you were on a real important mission, you didn't just get a seal, you got a ring. Remember when the, when the prodigal son come back and he said, put a ring on his finger and put a robe on his, on his back? Remember that parable? Okay, so when you were doing kingdom business, 
backed fully by the authority of the kingdom, you had a seal, you had, you had something. Well, the Word of God says that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. See, we're on kingdom business. So when you do kingdom business, you have all the power of the authority of the kingdom backing you. This is what you need to understand when you pray. Amen? And so there's two types, there's two phases to this kingdom understanding. One is the kingdom of God that's in you. And the importance of knowing this as you pray is paramount. I mean, you have to know that all the power, all the authority is in you. You are the kingdom. Mark 16, 15. We already quoted this a little bit, but look what it says. And he said to them, go. Who said this? Jesus Christ. He said, go. He's giving them the authority. God's not going to give you a quest to do something without the authority and the power to do it. Amen. So go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That's his will. Amen. Watch this. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, say these signs, will follow. So what are the, what are the follow? What's going to follow? These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And it, don't bring no snakes in here. It also says, don't tempt the Lord thy God. Okay? Look what it says. They will take up serpents. And if they have drank any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. See, these are the signs that follow. So I want to say this just real quickly, and this is not an indictment. This is not to say something against our church, nothing at all. I'm going to use the church here as a whole. Is this okay? The church of God. Do you know why many churches, many people aren't darkening the door of many churches? Because there's no sign of authority. See, the reality is, is people out there all the time hear how much we pray as Christians. Well, they, they see how much we pray. They, they see how much we go to church. Man, they, they see all this, these activities that we are involved in. Yet they see no power. They see no manifestation. They don't see these things. And so now you wonder why. Now you wonder why it's so difficult to preach the gospel to people that's been around it their whole life, but never seen the authority, never seen the power. But I'll tell you this, when we start operating in this power, as the church is meant to operate in this power, when you start moving in this area like this, you don't have to preach to anybody, really. I'll be upfront with you, because the minute they start seeing things move, they're going to hit the ground. Come on, when they see the real manifestation of the Holy Spirit, come on now. You are, you're not going to have to say anything. Man, I, 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 I'm telling you what, things are going to start moving. And you don't have to say a word, just like this morning. You don't have to say a word. Nobody said anything. We're just singing songs. That's all we're doing, singing songs. And my eyes closed, and I'm just praising God. I said, Lord, man, you, your spirit's strong here this morning. He goes, I know, watch this. And I opened my eyes, and the whole front row was full of people. That's God. Nobody orchestrates that but him. You see what I'm saying? This is his kingdom come. Salvation, healing, authority over all the unseen principalities and the powers. That's what the church was meant to do. That was his purpose. So when you pray his kingdom come, his will be done, that is what you're praying. So receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now the second part of this kingdom is the coming return, I should say, the return of Jesus Christ. Don't we know that's all that we've been waiting for, correct? Nowadays, is my battery going dead? Is that what's going on? Or is that me? It's all right. I just didn't know if I needed to do something. Am I good? Okay, I'm good. All right. The coming kingdom. What's our hope? As a Christian, what is our hope? What is our, our desire? It's see Jesus. Amen. If he should tarry and he doesn't come, then it's to make heaven. Amen. 
But if he doesn't, Terry, with all the things that's going on right now, I think more people are praying, Lord Jesus, come. Right. right? I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, so we're praying, right? The point that I'm trying to make is, is the hope of a Christian is the return of Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen? So that's the second part of this kingdom that we need to understand. When you pray His kingdom come, what you're praying is you're praying, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And that's totally scriptural. John 14, 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And there where I am, there you may be also. Matthew 25, 31 says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. He's coming back. Can somebody say amen? amen. Revelation twenty two twelve 12 says, And behold, I am coming quickly. Jesus said Himself, I am coming quickly, and my reward is coming with me. Come on, somebody shout somebody. Amen. That is our hope. That is our joy. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we're wanting to see. We're wanting to see him come, and we want him to see him come quickly, and we want to see that reward that comes with him. He's bringing his reward with him. Come on, somebody. To give to everyone according to his work. Revelation twenty two twenty says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. See, that's what we need to be praying. Look, if you, I, I just, I want to say this, and I'm going to say this the best way possible. You know, I like, you know, I, I, I love my family. I love my wife. I love what I'm doing. I like what God's moving. I mean, I, I like things here, but let me tell you something. This isn't eternity. There's still things that's going on here I don't like. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I mean, there's, and I'm just saying, this is not... Look, we don't need to get so attached to this life. I'm just being, this is the hope of the gospel. Because if you think this is good, now here's something the Lord showed me one time, because how many knows that fear can kind of come in anywhere? You know, fear can really kind of come in anywhere. And when I first got saved, you know, I'm going to be up front with you. I had, a, I had a pretty fun childhood, you know. I mean, we lived right next to a really big lake, you know, Lake Texoma, which is a large lake. Our family had a really big boat that sat on that lake. We, that's where we did all of our camping. The boat stayed on the lake the whole time. It was like a 35-foot, 40-foot cabin cruiser. Slept like eight people. And we, it just stayed on the lake, stayed on the water the whole time. And we had another boat that kind of was there, too, that we skied with. I mean, I grew up on the water. I love the water. Okay? And so when I got saved, I began to think of all the fun things that I've done on this you know, while I was a kid, you know, I had, I had, you know, I love cars. Y'all know I like cars. Yep. And for those of you that, I hope y'all didn't get offended what I did Wednesday. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Ru Rudy told me to light them up in my Corvette, and I just obeyed what my brother asked me to do. <laughs> anyway, that's fun. And so I began to think, Lord, I like the things that I, you know, that I'm experiencing here, you know, this world and everything like this. And the world spoke to me and he goes, Rick, he said, let me ask you a question. I said, okay. And he goes, who created this thing? I said, well, you did. You know, how God can say more in one sentence than we can say in 20. He goes, then if I created this one, what do you think heaven must be like? And come on now. <laughs> if, if I created this one, what, what do you think heaven's look? He said, I'm going to create all new. The word of God says a new heaven and a new. It's all going to be brand. Mm. Oh, how many likes that new smell? Man, come on now. You know, you went and got in the car and you, you can't afford a new one, but you just want to smell it. Especially how expensive they are now. Holy. Thank you, Jesus. Are you going to a brand new home that's just been built, right? <laughs> Microphone test. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, hopefully no more popping. Sorry, that just drives me nuts. So you see, if he created this one, what do you think heaven's going to be like? There's nothing here to hold us down. Amen. If your family's not saved, start praying for him. His kingdom come. Come on now. If somebody in your family needs to know Jesus, pray for them. Hold them up before the Lord. Minister, you know, whatever it takes. Amen. Because you want to spend eternity with your family, right? Come on now, then let's do kingdom business. Let's get busy. Because Jesus is coming back. And so the final thing I want to speak on this morning is give us this day our daily bread. What we're actually talking about when we talk about this is we're actually talking about the providential care of God. And I believe this is a real important part of praying this type of prayer. When you look at providential care, the word providence means divine guidance. The Latin root of providential is providentia. And it means foresight or precaution. It means that God can look into the future and know what you need before you even need it. That's the providential care of God. And the providence changed over the years. It, it usually referred to specifically the care of God. When the word was originally created, it meant specifically the care of God, the providential care of God. So much so that when they wrote the providential care of God, they capitalized the P. Because it meant the, the care of God, the foreknowledge care of God. He knows what you need before you need it. So when they wrote this thing down, providential care of God, they wrote, they, they capitalized it. So Matthew 6, 8 says, for your father knows that you need what you need before you ask. Philippians 4, 19 says this. And my God will supply all of your needs according to what? His riches and glory. Not according to what's here on this earth. So many times we kind of look at what, how's God going to do that? How's God going to meet that? How, where's that going to come from? Look, if you're looking on the earth for God to take care of what you're doing, it ain't going to happen from here. It comes from his riches and glory. Where there seems to be no way, God can make a way. Come on, somebody. If God knows what I need, and here's sometimes a lot of what people ask. Well, if God knows what I need before I know what I need, then why do I have to ask him for it? See, that's, man, that's a question I asked when I first got saved. I'm like, well, man, God, if you know what I need before I need it, why do I need to ask you? Just give it to me. Come on now, y'all know what I'm saying. But let's take a look at Matthew 5, 3, because we're all talking about the same prayer, right? This is all, this is all, all that, that we're hearing out of this is the Sermon on the Mount. I would, I would trust that you'd go and read this. But it said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. This is how he starts off this sermon. Well, let's read that in the New Living Translation. It says, God blesses those who are poor and realizes their need for him. That's basically what that means. So here's the thing. God knows what you need before you need it. But the reality is, is you need to know that you need him. Okay, so here's what I want you to understand. Why does God have us ask for it, even though he already knows that we need it? Why does he have us ask for it? If God gives you everything you need without you asking him for it, then how will you ever know that it was him that did it? You see the point? And so now what you see is now we've got... You know, if, if, uh, what do we call that in society? If I give my child everything they need or want or desire before they ever ask me for it, what do we call that in our society? Spoil. Okay, so why would God do that for you? He doesn't want you spoiled. He wants you to know that you need him. He wants you to, you to know that you need him. He don't need to know that you need him. He already knows that you need him. You need to know that you need him. So that's why he's asking you to ask for it. It's not because it fills some uh, void in God's life that fills his ego. Ooh, that makes me feel good. They're asking for it. God, that's not God. God don't need you to fill his ego. Come on, somebody. You got to get this this morning. 
John 6, 26 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. See, God just finished, Jesus just finished feeding 5,000 people. Go back and look at this story. It's in John 6. Fascinating story. All these people were surrounding him because he fed them. Right? A lot of people. That's just men. That's not talking women and children. So there's 10,000 people. He just fed 10,000 people. Over 10,000 probably. And so he wanted to be quiet and by himself. So he took off like he normally did. But he didn't just take off. He went across the lake. You can go back and look at the story. When he gets on the other side, all the people wake up and realize, hey, Jesus is gone. And they all followed him, realized he went on the other side of the lake. So they all followed him, went to the other side of the lake. Man, everybody started pressing him in. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where? Blah, 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 blah. And this is what Jesus said to them. Look what he said. They're all like, why did you leave us? We're, we're seeking for you. We're looking for you. We're, 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 we're wanting to stay with you wherever you go. And this is how Jesus responded. He said, Jesus replied and said, I tell you the truth. The only reason you're following me is because I gave you food. I want you to think about that statement. I bet there's many people that have named Jesus Christ their Lord, and the only reason they're doing it is because they, because they think he's going to give them some stuff. Look, God isn't the United States government. I mean, no. Uh, ouch. But it's true. He's not some sugar daddy in heaven. And Jesus, this is Jesus saying this. Look, friend, don't get upset with me. I'm just preaching the word today. But Jesus looked at all those people and he said, the only reason you're following me is because I fed you. And do you know by the end of this story, did you know all of them left him except the 12 disciples? It was offensive to him. Why was it offensive to him? Well, well why? Because it was true. I just want you to know when you're praying a prayer like this, what you're praying. Man, we were shouting a minute ago. <laughs> he said, what this? He said, the only reason you're seeking me is because I fed you, not because you understand the miracle signs. But do not be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. What it, what? When we begin to seek the right thing, you will begin to recognize the providential care of God. When you begin to seek the right thing, you'll begin to recognize the providential care of God. When you begin to put first things first, Matthew 6, 31 and 33, look what he says here. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And he's talking about food, clothing, all this. He goes, therefore, don't worry about saying, what are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? What are you going to wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But, say but, seek first the kingdom. Now we're back to the kingdom business. Do you see this part? part? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. When you begin to put the kingdom of God first, God, his providential care is opened up in your life. That's the point. When you put God first, he puts you first. But here's the tricky thing to that. He's already put you first. He's waiting on you. Jesus Christ has already died on the cross. He put you first before you were ever born. He put you first. Matthew 9, 7, or Matthew 7, 9 says this. Or what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him or he will give him a snake. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? See, we can pray for God give us our daily bread. He wants to provide for you. He wants to provide your clothing. He wants to provide your home. He wants, to he wants all these things for you. He knows that you need all these things. But what happens in society is we get so focused on the things. We get so focused on the bread. We get so focused on the clothing. We get so focused on everything else that God's kingdom is kind of set aside a little bit. And this is why this is part of the prayer. We need to stay focused. Kingdom business before food. That, that is, it's essential. You've got to understand this because we can get wrapped up in the houses, the cars, the boats, the planes, the trains, the automobiles. We can get caught up in all that. 
But when you put his kingdom first, come on, somebody. When you pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, man, all of a sudden his providential care comes in and you can't keep up with all that he's doing for you. Come on, somebody, you can't keep up with it. But it's all about putting his kingdom first. Psalms 37, 25 says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I seen his seed begging for bread. Let me tell you something. When you put your hands in the light, when you put your life in the hand of God, it'll never hit the ground. But you need to trust him. You need to trust him. And so, yeah, Lord, I need you. It's okay to pray for food. Yes. Lord, give us, give me today what I need today. Give me today what I need today. And he can do it. Second Corinthians 9, 8 says this. God is able. Who's able? What is he able to do? He's able to cause what? All grace. Say all grace. Man, that's powerful. All grace can abound towards you so that you having all sufficiency in all things at all times. Do you see that? I love this translation. It's the, the English Standard Version. It's, it's, it's powerful. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you having all sufficiency in all things at all times may abound in every good work. Friend, I want to close. I'm going to ask the, the, prayer, t the prayer team. <laughs> yeah, prayer team, come on up again as well. But the worship team. See, what we, what we experienced here this morning is that we understand that we all have physical needs. We all understand that we need food. We all understand that we need clothing. We all understand that we need a, a home, a place to live. But friend, the most important need that we have as people is not physical. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual need. We need to understand that we are empty when Christ is not filling our life. That we can spin and we can toil and we can work all day long and Maybe we can get a bank full of money. Maybe we can get the house. Maybe we can get the car and all those things. But friend, your life will be empty. Because there's no meaning. There's just no meaning to it. And when you begin to put God first and you begin to see lives changed. You begin to see people that, that were once bound by whatever. You, you fill in the blanks, maybe depression, maybe drugs, maybe alcohol, whatever, maybe sickness, disease, whatever. When you see, man, we've heard so many miracle, miraculous things that's happened over the last several months. We've, we've seen people healed from cancer over the last several months. Two, two people healed from cancer. I think Jesus is over cancer. Amen? Let's not take this lightly. Man, we see God moving in a mighty way. Let's not take... He, he, he's also the God over depression. There's a lot of depression happening right now because they're telling people... Well, they have been telling people, stay in your homes. And look, I'm not trying to get political. And I don't want you to think that I am. But there's a lot of things that are happening today that really is playing into the depression of people. And people are, are being depressed. They can't, you know, they can't move. They can't, can't breathe. Fear around every corner. You know, they've, and I'm, I'm not going to get into this. I'm just telling you. We need to make a choice. Are we going to believe God, his kingdom come? Or are we going to give in to the fear? Because this world's not going to change. Folks, I want you to hear what I'm saying this morning. This world is not going to change. We're not here to change the world. When people, when you see preachers get up on there and say, we're here to change the world. No, you're not. Because this world is not going to change. That's why it says in Peter, it's going to be burned up and done away with. Come on, somebody. This world is not going to change. What you're praying for is the change of people in the world, not the world.
You're praying for the hearts and the souls of people. Amen? Because we know the end of this world. We know what it is. So could you stand to your feet this morning? So what we've seen in this prayer already is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Take care of our needs, Lord, spiritually and physically. So as we, I know that we've already had an altar, we've already had prayer, we've already had healing. So if, if, if we want this just to be a time, if you, if you still need prayer, I want you to come up, I'll, I'll pray with you. But can we just take the remaining five to ten minutes here and can we not just thank God for who he is and what he's already done? Can we do that this morning? If you need prayer, that's fine. I, I want to pray for you. And if, if you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, I want you just to join in with us. Just reach your hand out. Lay your hand on your phone, however you're watching. And receive what God has for you this morning. But I'm here to tell you, friend, that you have power. You have power. You have authority when you pray. And what we're doing here is we're just trying to show you. Because right now, we need people praying right now. We need people praying for our nation. We need people praying for, for our cities for our states we need people praying for our young children come on somebody we have children being born into this come on yes i'm telling you we need to pray for our children we need we need to pray now and i just want you to know the authority that you have when you pray so can we take just a few minutes and thank god however you desire
Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you this morning as we have come to this altar today. Lord, you have met every need in the name of Jesus. And Father, we are so thankful for what you have done here today. I pray that no one today leave here the same way that they've came in. But, Father, they will have had an encounter with you. And, Lord, that it just it does not stop here. It does not end here. But it goes with us as we go outside these four walls. And, Lord, I thank you that as opportunities arise, that, Lord, we would be able to give an account for the hope that is within us. And, Father, I thank you for it. 
and I give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Can you give God one more praise offering? Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great week. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus and have a great week.